Check one, two, one, two. Testing one, two, one, two. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Doggy Diamonds. Um, You already know what this is, Doggy Diamonds TV. Shout out to everybody who's on the check-in. Shout out to everybody who's going to watch this on the playback. Shout out to everybody who's going to be live in the chat room. Shout out to everybody who's going to send donations, who hit the like. Shout out to y'all. But without further ado, I'm going to bring my guest on the screen. This is a long overdue interview that we've been trying to do for a little while now. And, um, you know, uh, it ain't been able to get done. No fault of mine, no fault of his, but it just ain't get done. But we're going to bring it to you tonight. And this is not what you think. So we're going to bring a lot of clarity tonight. So let me bring, he's on the screen now. Introduce yourself to the people. What's up, everybody? How y'all doing? My name is Bishop Lamar Miller Whitehead from Brooklyn, New York. And I'm going to be your next Brooklyn Bowl president. All right, for some <laughs> reason, oh yeah, you unfroze. Okay, your next Brooklyn Borough president. So I titled this. I told you what I titled it from prison to the pulpit to trying to save Brooklyn. How, how accurate is that? I, I, it, it's, it's so accurate, man. And, um, hold on. I want to, yeah, it's so accurate, man. You don't even know how accurate you are because, um, first I just want to thank you brother for, uh, allowing me to be here today and to be on your platform. Um, it, it's it's a privilege and it's an honor to be amongst you you and your audience and um you you are so on target you are so on target you don't even know how much you are prison uh, my, so prison so pri like because because it's like prison to pulpit so here we go without right. you know you don't have to give the details but just reading up you was wrongly in prison let's let's get that out the way first. We don't want you to think that you was out there catching juxes and you did this, that, and the third, and then you try to change your life around and in, 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 uh, in, in prison. You was wrongly in prison. So give the people a little details of what happened. Yeah, so so just to, just to touch base on what you're saying, like this whole campaign is ran off of from the prison to the pulpit to the office of the bro president, you know? And that's why I said this whole topic you got, man, is just on target. So, you know, um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Uh, born and raised, and it came a point in my life where that you know I was, I'm very very successful into mortgage and real estate, and um, the powers that be, you know, wanted me to. They was doing an investigation on some of my friends um, from Brooklyn, and they wanted me to tell. And I wasn't about that, you know. I'm not about that life, you know. I'm about a straightforward life. Um, I'm somebody that's from the streets that's been in the streets and i'm not i'm not with the telling i'm not with the, the snitching and all that nonsense and what they did was they railroaded me um they sent me they what well, they took me on trial for grand larceny identity death death scheme to defraud and what they did was they withheld evidence they withheld uh evidence from my attorney we we found out that the search warrant were tampered with. What I what I mean by tampered with, they had search warrants without the judge's signature, but they somebody took the stamp of the judge and stamped his name, and that's how they were able to execute search warrants in my home. Um, and they actually went to another state. New York went to another state, New Jersey, and used a search warrant from New Jersey to search my home. And what they did was they started to quote unquote, take things out of my house, put it in a bag, put it in a trunk and drove it back to New York as per their testimony. Right then and there, we didn't know any of that. If we would have known all of that, if they wouldn't have withheld the search warrants, everything that they used against me in trial was admissible. It was not, it could not be put in. It was illegally confiscated. And um, they with they hit all of that, and it was so much more. So, um, you know, I was railroaded, man. I was railroaded by Suffolk County, Long Island. And anybody that knows Suffolk County, they know that it's very racist out there. And um, you know, the judge uh, sentenced me to eleven and a third to thirty four years. Yeah, he sentenced me to eleven and third to thirty four. And you know, doggy man. There was the highest count that I had was a D felony, nonviolent, and the most time that they could have gave given me was one and a third to four years. But what happened was um, they trumped up the charges. 
It was duplicious charges, which mean that it was the same people over and over and over again that they and they was trumping up charges. So they had me a 57 count indictment. And then what they did was when I hired my fourth lawyer, I hired my fourth attorney. Once I hired the fourth attorney, he was very, very, very good. He was very good. So they got afraid. So they dropped 23 counts. So it went down to 34 counts. When I lost trial, I lost trial. I, I was found not guilty of 17. And I was found guilty of 17. And um, what the judge did was he gave me one year, one year, one year, one year, one year, one year, one and three, one and three, one year, one year, 17 times. And he added it all up to 11 and a third to 34 years because he ran everything consecutive. I'm about to say he didn't give you concurrent? No. No, he ran everything consecutive. And um, and it added up to, to 11 and a third to 34 years. And, um, you know, and I had to fight. I had to fight my way out of it, man. You know, I went to, they sent me to Ulster County, right, where my the paperwork was... Um, they saw like so when you go to prison, they give you a time competition sheet, and it said it it all it said one to three, one to three, one to three, one to three. So logically, they like all right, all this is running concurrent. So they sent me to Ulster County in New York, but when they seen that he ran it all consecutive, they sent me straight to the box and moved me to a maximum facility downstate reception. So they sent me to downstate. I stayed in downstate for 45 days, 45 or 60 days. Then they sent me to Sing Sing Correction Facility, where I did 90% of my, 95% of my time. And I was just in the law library. And then they moved me to Mount McGregor Medium after five years in Sing Sing, or four and a half years in Sing Sing, no, five years in Sing Sing. And I was studying, studying. And, I, and God gave me my own motion to put in. And I put my own motion in, and I was released, man, you know. Um, the first part was the judge sentenced me to crimes that I was found not guilty of. So before even the search warrant and everything happened, I was able to get vindicated because we I was able to prove that he sentenced me to charges that the jury found me not guilty. It was just a complete debacle, brother. So, you know, I did uh, almost six years in prison um, in uh, Sing Sing Correctional Facility and Mount McGregor. Uh, when I left and I, I left Sing Sing. And I went to Mount McGregor. I was there for maybe, I think, six months. No, I was there for a year because I left Sing Sing in 2012, uh, July, and I was released from Mount McGregor after a reversal in July 31st of, of 2013. So I was in Mount McGregor for one year. So that's that, that like, you know, they railroaded me, kid. So let me ask you something. When this happens to you and they're found that they railroaded you and it was wrongdoing, do they say, I'm sorry, and let you go? Or do they cash you out? No, nah, they so so at the end of the day, they don't care, right? And um, you know, can you hear me clear? You can hear me clear. I hear right? you per I hear you perfectly oh. fine. Yeah. Right. So so at the end of the day, they don't care, right? Um, this first piece that I that I move for is just to be vindicated, so therefore they couldn't hold me. So what did I do, right? Um what did I do? I did something, doggy, where it's rarely done. I'm talking about rarely done. Um, I might be the first one. I haven't done the research, but I might be the first one to do what I did. Mm. So what happened is this. A lot of us don't know. And this is why I'm running for borough president, because a lot of people don't know the justice system. So we have what you call a 440 motion. It's a post-conviction motion. You always need a vehicle according to the law in order for justice. So men and women that are in prison, they use the vehicle of a post-conviction motion, of a 440 motion. What people don't know is when you use a 440 vehicle, it must go back to the same judge, which means you are filing a motion of the inaccuracies of the court and the injustice of the district attorney, but it goes back in front of the actual judge who just sentenced you. Hmm. Now, a lot of people don't notice that judges, state judges, are elected in, uh, right? So you tell the people judge, that. Right. They are, they are elected in. So look, logically, why would they overturn themselves? Hmm. and then have to run for re-election 
when their opponent would then say, yo, look at this. He overturned himself. How can you trust this judge to do justice? How can you trust this judge to do justice if he's sitting here overturning himself? So now, do they do not reverse themselves because they want to be elected again. So the 440 motions, you nine times out of 10 is not going to get no, no rhythm because you, uh, the judges are not going to reverse themselves. Mm -hmm. So now you have to use that 440 motion and you have to couple that 440 motion into an appeal. Now you got to appeal it to a higher court. So that's what I did. I appealed it to the higher courts of the appellate division or whatever, where I got a little bit of rhythm as far as to um, what he did. I used that rhythm to do something that's never really been done before, right? If it has, maybe once. So what I did, doggy, was this. I sued the prison. Mm. Right? So... I used an Article 78, right? I used the vehicle of an Article 78. What that is, is a civil vehicle for justice, civilly. So Article 78, it, it's slim to no chances you get out of prison using Article 78. So what did I do? I studied the Article 78 on not how to win, but how to lose. Hmm. Because it was so rare for people to win any Article 78s that I needed to know how they lost. So what I learned was 98% of the people who filed an Article 78, they lost because of their emotions. Hmm. They were so upset at what the judges have done in the, in the, um, in the uh, 440 motion that what they did was they raised criminal procedure law in a civil practice. Hmm. So if you file a civil loss, a civil uh, 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 a lawsuit, you can't use criminal procedure law. So what they did, what people were doing was they was using criminal procedure law on a civil, uh, uh, in a civil matter now. So what I did was I said, okay, so that's how they was lo losing. So I used criminal procedure law as a foundation to persuade the courts to understand why this civil uh, lawsuit should be effective. So I use civil practice law, but I, I undergirded it with the foundation of what they did through criminal procedure law. Hmm. But I was able to show them how they illegally was holding me in prison based off of the sentencing, based off of things that happened in trial. I used it as exhibits, but I didn't use that as law. Hmm. Right? Right. So I, I, the Lord allowed me to use my wisdom with this. So, so now when I sued the jail and I said, they're holding me illegal. And what I want, I don't want money. I want my freedom. Hmm. You see what I'm saying? So now when I sued the jail, what it did was it took it out of the hands of the district attorney that had a heart on for me and it took it out of the hands of the judge that did not want to do, do justice because he had to protect his lifestyle. So now when you use a civil procedure lawsuit, the attorney general takes over. Hmm. So now in my mind, I'm saying the attorney general don't even know me. So therefore they're not going to have a heart on for me. No bias. And, right. And they have to go according to the law. Mm -hmm. They don't even know me. Right. So now the, the the attorney general has to ask information from the state. They turned over the sentencing minutes. So, and they turned over the time computation sheet. So the time computation sheet is what the state facilities use to govern how much time you have. So when I filed my motion, I knew that they were going to come back with the sentencing minutes, which is signed off of, on, 
and they was going to come back with a time competition sheet, which establishes this is how much time I had to do in prison. Mm -hmm. But what they didn't know that I had was the jury call. See, people don't understand. People don't understand that. Hold on one second, dog. One second. People don't understand that. Hold on one second. Let me just let these guys know I'm on interview. So people don't understand, dog, that when you file a motion, you have an opportunity when the district attorney or the attorney general submits their motion, you can reply. See, people don't know that. Hmm. You can the last word. So what I did was I had the last word. So when they said, look at the sentencing minute, Your Honor, and look at the time uh, competition sheet, Your Honor, look at the time competition sheet and look at the sentencing minutes, Your Honor, as per what the judge declared and as per what the judge have, we are holding him righteous. But they didn't know that I had the sentence. I had the um, jury charge minute. Now, doggy, what a lot of people don't understand and what they fail to do is when people get convicted, mm -hmm. they get conviction and they get so emotional and the judge either remand them or let them go. But one thing they did, they didn't do that I did. I ask for a jury poll. Hmm. When you ask for a jury poll to each crime that you was found guilty of, the jury has to state that count and state that crime as to either guilty or not guilty. So they went to they went through 34 counts and said guilty or they said not guilty. So what I did was I used that as an exhibit because the attorney general based their whole argument off the sentencing minutes, which what the judge sentenced me to, and the time con commitment paper, which is is equivalent to the sentencing minutes because that's what they do. They take the sentencing minutes and put it on the time um, computation sheet and they, the commitment, excuse me, the commitment sheet and they file it to the judge, I mean, to the, uh, to the prison and that's how they have jurisdiction over your body. But what they didn't have was these jury charge. Mm -hmm. So I said to the, to, to, the, uh, to the courts, I said, Your Honor, now I need you to look at what the jury, I need you to look at what the jury has convicted me of and look at the sentencing. So now it was such a discrepancy of the judge sentenced me to 54 counts as to a 54 count indictment. Mm -hmm. But I only had a 34 count indictment. Hmm. So he was sentencing me to crimes one to three years, uh, one year, one year for count 47, count 52, count 50 and there was never no counts after 34. Hmm. so i was able to establish how the judge maliciously sentenced me to counts that was already dismissed hmm. and i was able to get vindicated and released out of prison as to showing the maliciousness of me being uh, a black man in a white man's court hmm. So you, so they didn't cash you out, huh? They, you ain't get no bread. You rather had your freedom oh, than, oh, than so, the money. So, so, not to, so they, they didn't cash me out. But the thing about it, they're going to cash me out because now the second proceedings, right, of what I'm going, what I'm about to do is, um, I've been gathering more information. So now we are about to put in a motion. We are about to put in a motion to, um, to fully vindicate me. Mm -hmm using these illegal search warrants, using all of the inaccuracies that they use that we just found out about. I have, in my, in my possession now, I have, I think, five or six affidavits from every lawyer that I hired that have affirmed that um, the evidence that I've just obtained was never turned over to them hmm. and that they asked the... DA for this evidence and the DA, we have it written down, the DA stated in a motion that he never had none of these things. 
And we have it now. He always had it. Mm. So now we, 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 we're putting together a motion um, that's going to fully, fully exonerate me. But I want to wait until I win the ball presidency. So therefore, because I'm going to implement a prison reform in Brooklyn where that I'm going to fight for men and women that are illegally convicted in, for, in, in prison, not only illegally convicted, but doggy, at the end of the day, some of these judges just get, have given men too, many, too much time. Mm. You, 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 you've given too much time, right? Mm. You woke up on the wrong side of the bed and you gave football numbers, mm -hmm. right? And you're giving people death sentences in prison with, in a state where we don't even have the death penalty. Yeah. So you're using years to kill black men and black women, black and brown men, black and brown women, based off of your racism. And I'm rolling out a plan against systemic racism, where therefore inequality should not be accepted. So let me tell you this statistic that's going to blow your mind, doggy, and mm -hmm. everybody that's watching us, because, you know, this is the reason why I'm going to win the bowl presidency. And this is the reason why, why I need to win it because there are certain statistics that we don't know that are killing us. Listen to this. New York State has 62 counties. 62 counties in New York State. Out of men that have 25 to life or higher, out of 62 counties in New York State, one third of the men are from Brooklyn, New York. Damn. And I probably know so many of them. Damn. That's what I probably personally know a lot of them. That's that's sad too. Damn. Let me tell you something, brother. It's a staggering number. Another statistic in the United States, there are, I think, the number is, oh man, I think it's 52,000 men and women that are illegally in prison. Mm. Because statistics says, I think it's 2.2% of the population in prison are innocent. Mm. And over 2 million people in prison throughout the United States. So it's, it's over 50,000 people that's in prison. And y'all don't quote me on these numbers, but y'all got the gist of what I'm talking mm -hmm, about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I believe it's over 52,000 people in prison illegally. That's too much. So when you say illegally mean trumped up charges or they were completely innocent and they just... Completely innocent. Wow. Completely innocent. Like, you have to understand, right? You have to understand, doggy, right? That there are people that just didn't do the crime. Mm -hmm. innocent but that's not the only innocence though because if the DA cheated to trick the jury to find you guilty you innocent yeah. whether if you did the crime or you didn't they cheated to, to, to the jury to trick their mind mm -hmm. of your innocence yeah so if you cheated in court district attorney prosecutor then that man is innocent. Question: Does doesn't the DAs get elected in also? No. The, oh, you're right. The, yes, they do. Yeah. That reason why. Well, listen. Reason why I'm asking you that because I, you know, our people don't like to vote. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because we don't trust the government, which is, you know, we don't believe in politics based off of history. And I always tell people to vote locally, vote for them judges, and vote for them DAs. Look at their track record. So. What I would, what I wanted to, I always tell my audience that, yeah, because you know the, the slogan and the, the cliche, presidents are selected, not elected, so they think they don't want to have to, they don't, they don't just, they don't deal with voting at all. But I was trying to tell people, you do have DAs, uh, who we had in Brooklyn, Morgenthau. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, uh, yeah, Morgan, you already know what I'm talking about. I'm like, yo, y'all could get him no, out of there. You could no, get. No, 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 no. Morgenthau was Manhattan. 
Hines. Hines. Was yeah, Hines was Brooklyn. But, yeah. I, but I guess because I, I know about Morgenthau too for another reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, we yeah. could get them out of here and some of them judges. So y'all not understanding. If this dude convicted your brother, your cousin, your homie illegally, round up some people and vote him out. You can get him out. Y'all can get him out. But being that we walked away from voting in politics, period, and I understand why, that's why they just get to just railroad and fry people every year because we're not getting rid of them. Yo, dog, let me tell you this, right? Um, me, now me being a candidate, like, I understand why we've been dying. And I mm. understand why we've been getting thrown into prison and they've been throwing away the key. You want to know why? Because when I tell you we don't use our influence we don't use our power. If y'all go on my page on Instagram, right? That's Bishop Lamore and Whitehead, right? You go on my page on Instagram, you're going to see everybody that endorsed me. I have a lot of influencers, rappers, um, all different type of artists that have endorsed me, right? All the influencers that I have are very influential to a culture that I need to provoke, right? Mm. I'm going to either live with y'all or die with y'all. I'm going to either win with you or I'm going to die with you, right? Because at the end of the day, right, when you look at the district attorney, he he is elected, mm. right? He's elected into office, mm. right? When you look at D.A. Hines, right, he was foul. He was foul. Scumbag. Right? And, and that's why, foul, just foul, right? And that's why so many of his cases are getting overturned. But guess what? He was getting elected off of the backs of innocent men that was that, that was uh put in prison for guilty being guilty right he was elected year after year after year you want to know why because he, he said about how much of his convictions and his convictions so he looked like he was doing his job even right. though it was illegal yep right so now that all of this is coming out right and now he's dead right because he died yep. now right he bamboozled the system. It's, just, it's, too, it's too late, and it's too late. Yeah. He bamboozled the system. Officers, right, that have been setting people up, right? All they doing is this. Well, to my recollection, I don't I don't remember nothing. That's, so that's blocking. That's shielding them now. So now these officers that have made rank, right? So now you went from a beat walker to a sergeant to a detective to a lieutenant to a captain, right? Based off of these you 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 setting black and brown men up. Nobody don't know about it. So now they got to do 20 years. And now all of a sudden, after 20 years, you find out that this dude was sitting here setting people up. And now nothing can happen to him because all he got to do is protect himself from purging himself. That's it. Mm. As long as he don't lie um, on the stand as to when they say, do you remember this? All he got to do is say, to my recollection, no, I don't. And he's good. Yeah, because you can't make somebody remember something. You can't make somebody no, and it's yeah. for so long. But yeah, guess what? His pension is good, his house is good. He got all honors. He ain't stripped right from nothing. And at the end of the day, we as a culture, we are so far from it. We're so far from politics, and this is why we're the only ones dying. You don't hear about Caucasians getting shot and killed. You don't hear about Asians getting shot and killed. You don't hear about. Uh, you rarely hear about um, um, Hispanics getting shot and killed, right? You always hear about black and brown men getting killed. Mm. That it goes back to slavery. We know, yeah. My audience, it goes right yeah. The same ideology, mm -hmm. right? And at the end of the day, we're the ones with the power. Mm. You, so let me tell you this, right? And, and I'm so glad that we have in this interview because it's so informative, right? So in a certain section of 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 um of Flatbush Brooklyn, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's in the 40th district, right? So in the 40th district, right, they have 240,000 residents, mm -hmm. right? 240,000. Watch this. 240,000 residents. Out of the 240,000 residents, 94,000 are registered voters. Damn. That's that ain't nothing. Out of 240, right? Mm -hmm. Out of the 94,000 that are registered voters, in the last two years, mm -hmm. only 14,000 out of that 94,000, out of that 240,000 voted. Wow. So they're not even coming out to the, to the poll. 
Because those 94,000 are what I call Obama voters. <laughs> and after Obama made it hot and said, yo, come vote, everybody was pumped up. After that, they stopped. But nobody is voting for the local offices, the ones that is going to keep you uh, 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 10 toes down. Do you know we did a poll from the ages of 18? So I'm running for the president of Brooklyn. It's called the Brooklyn Bowl president, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Brooklyn, let me give you a little history on that. Brooklyn um, was a city in, in 1600. It was filed by the Dutch. In 1898, it turned over its jurisdiction to New York City which then called, then it, it turned into a borough. Now, if Brooklyn was still a city, which in theory it, it is, people don't know that we would be the fourth largest city in the most powerful country in the world, United States of America. The only three cities that's bigger than Brooklyn is Los Angeles, Chicago, and New York. Wow. And yeah, I was telling people too, like uh, 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 Van Sicklin is really buried in the hood. You know, he's really in new lots and all of that is was named for new lots for the slaves and all that. A lot of them own, yeah. a lot of those uh streets in BK is named after slave owners too. You know what I'm saying? Van Sicklin being one of them, you know? Right. So uh, it Brooklyn has a lot of, and Murder Inc., the real Murder Inc., it's from East New York. They was in East New York. You know what I'm saying? They was in East New York. So, um, let me ask you something. What do you? What is your political affiliation? Democrat, Republican, uh, yeah, Independent. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm running as Democrat. So, so how do you get people to trust you as a Democrat? Because some people, you know, you again, people feel like Democrat and Republican is the same, and the lesser two evils. That's what getting. That's what gets told. How do you assure people that I ain't one of the evils? How do you do that? How do I assure it by you knowing who I am? Right now, let me make this logical for us because we always validate our position to stay home. We always validate laziness. For example, well, I'm not dealing with Democrat. I'm not dealing with Republican because I'm not. I don't even trust both of them. Well, mm -hmm. I need y'all to understand that Democrat and Republican is only used as a vehicle to get to the common goal of what we need, yeah. right? I've always been a Democrat. However, I have a different ideology. Let me say this. I have a different moral compass. Now, every man, at, every man answers to his own God. I'm a bishop for real with two churches, one in Brooklyn, one in Atlanta, mm -hmm. right? I would rather be an enemy to man than an enemy to God at any time of my life, hmm. right? So my moral compass is to do the work, righteous work of what God says. Now, I'm not turning people into my, into my, um, and trying to uh, bring people to my religion. No, my moral compass is to do people right. Now, the reason why I'm running Democrats, because I'm a Democrat. Mm -hmm. However, we have to understand that you need a vehicle in order to get to where you need to go. Mm -hmm. The Brooklyn Borough President's seat and New York State is a Democratic state. Mm -hmm. Whoever wins the primaries of the Democratic Party wins the race automatically in November. Mm -hmm. So June 22nd, the, 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 the primary race, when I win in November, I walk right in because every Democrat in Brooklyn is going to vote for me. Period. So what will make me different, right? We have to understand that my story makes me different. Mm. Who I am makes me different, right? Where I come from makes me different. I come from the streets of Brooklyn, New York, all my life. Yesterday, I turned 43 years old. And I am Brooklyn. Now, let me tell you this, doggy, right? My father, June 14th, 1978, six weeks after I was born, he was the first I can't breathe. Mm. 16 white police officers beat my father to death, mm. choked him to death because of the color of his skin. They pulled my uncle over for a traffic stop. 
which the ticket was only $50. He called my father, who was an av- uh, um, a activist, and he was um, a, um, 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 an entrepreneur. He owned stores. So he was able to have a pistol on his um, on his side. He had a permit. He came, he said, listen, that's my brother. He raised his hand, listen, I have a permit for my, my, my gun. You know what I'm saying? And they said, the nigga got a gun. Mm. And they jumped on him and beat him. Mm. Handcuffed him with two uh, handcuffs and choked him to death mm. because of the color of his skin. What part of Brooklyn it, was this? It was in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, mm. right there on Park Place and um and Notion Avenue. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You know, I grew up on Prospect between Brooklyn and New York. Mm. Right? So at the end of the day, we got blood on this ground. All these other candidates that's running, they ain't got no blood. They ain't got no sweat. All they are is politicians. All they want is that position, right? We need change. We need a doggy diamond to have a voice, right? Mm-hmm. They don't know nothing about you. Facts. They don't know nothing about you. They don't know nothing about these artists out here. They don't know nothing about these podcasts out here. They don't know nothing. And I got blood on the Brooklyn ground because a lot of my homies got killed on the street. Literally. I, You know, like, so again, when us Brooklynites, they don't understand why we so strong about Brooklyn. I don't know about any other boroughs that's strong about their boroughs like we are with Brooklyn. It's because it was a very, very dangerous place to live at one point. And we survived a lot, contributed to some of the BS a little bit, but we survived it. And now we can see right now how, yo, a lot of stuff wasn't right. And we trying to fix some of the wrongs that we committed. So the younger generation don't fall into the trap. But it's like you being, you know, us being peers, almost the same age. It's like, yo, you get it. And you could talk to the youth because you fly. You know what I'm saying? You're not coming as no old man with some old way, you like one step out of, yo, uh, I know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know what it is out here. And um, I think that that's needed too, because it'd be a generation gap when you're trying to talk to the little dudes. They be like, yo, I can't even listen to you. You know what I'm saying? Because you just look like somebody, you know, drunk uncle or or you don't care about us. So but right. when you when you give your testimony and say, nah, they got me out here too. I got God out here. They killed my pops. You know what I'm saying? Like that that's a little bit more relatable. So um when you when so with with borough president, what I wanted to ask you about, who's responsible for stopping the gentrification in Brooklyn? Is that borough president? Or yeah, that- well the borough the borough president have a huge say. So the borough president, let me just give you a few things to what 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 I'll be over and what I'll be doing, right? So the borough president has um they call the borough president the bully pulpit, right? <laughs> where, where when he talk, listen, you know what I mean? Like, listen, he's strong, you know what I mean? But we're um the the I'll be over all of the zoning, right? You mm. see all these big buildings going up, you know. I'll be over that, right? The, all of the developers that come into Brooklyn that want to build, that want to do all of these groundbreaking uh, 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 um, uh, ideas and want to do all, they got to come through me, right? So I'm over all of that. I'm over land usage, right? Also with this with this rent, why are our people being pushed out of Brooklyn, right? It's because, right, it's because nobody is really protecting our people, right? Because there's no one on this ballot, right, that is more sensible to our community, right? You know, like, like I've been in the community. Everybody that's on this ballot that's running against me, right, have used government money in order to uh, give giveaways. Like me, I do, I've been doing turkey giveaways and Christmas giveaways, toy giveaways for the last eight years, right? With my own money, or if my if I raise money through my church, or if I bring an artist to come, they donate turkeys, right? So when you got these other politicians and different things of that nature, they use government money and they got photo ops. You go onto their page, they got all this photo ops, but that's government money. They ain't true to the game, right? They ain't true to the game. So at the end of the day, right? Doggy, I've been in real estate over 20 years. Mm-hmm. I teach free financial literacy classes, how to flip, uh, get your credit right, doing this. I do it free. I do it free. Wow. I got hundreds of students, right? 
I do it free. Kids, um, um, one of my, uh, two of my ministers, they 26 years old. They got their first house, four bedrooms, no, five bedrooms, four or five bedrooms, uh, three bathrooms, first house at 25 years old, they closed and they just in turned- In New York? Yeah, 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 no, so, 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 so they wanted to purchase in Jersey. Okay. But I got people that purchased properties in, in New York, right? I showed them how to buy and flip properties. My point is this, right? I've, I've been real, in real estate over 20 years, right? I know how to educate people because it's not just about black and brown, mm -hmm. but it's about people in general, right? Because gentrification is only a terminology when when e uh, when equality is not it does not exist, mm -hmm. right? Gentrification is when people in theory say, oh my goodness, the Caucasian people are coming in. Oh my goodness, the Asian people are coming in. Oh my goodness, the Russians are coming in. No, those are people too. What do we saw to tell them to move out because they, they got the understanding and they know their rights. They know they got good credit, they got money and they can't buy. No, no, it doesn't work like that. But what I'm against is systemic racism. Mm -hmm. Why are black and brown people working from the working from the back, not understanding how to capitalize off credit, not understanding how to understand uh, 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 financial literacy, not understanding about rezoning, not understanding about the Euro uh, uh, um, um, uh, development program, right? Because um, developers come in, right? And they got this game so locked where therefore they dictate what they want to do. So they're coming in right now and they're saying pretty much, okay, cool. We'll give y'all 80-20 split, which means 80% are going to pay what we want them to pay. 20% will give them affordable affordable housing. Mm. I ain't with that. And I'm not signing off on it. Mm. When I first go into office, right, it's going to be automatically a 60-40. Mm. And then after the first year, I'm dropping it down to 50-50. And I might just do 50-50 off the rip mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, right, you you are not going to push people out, right? Now, you can give them a status quo to live because if you've got this beautiful building and you make 50% of it affordable housing, don't come mess their stuff out. up. Mm -hmm. You're not going to mess their stuff up, right? I'm with that. But, but I could be, I could balance living by giving owners, you know, a tax abatement, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of you, why is the new, um, the new living for Brooklynites in the Carolinas or in the homeless shelters, mm -hmm. right? Why are we pushing out? You want to know why we pushing them out? Because there's nobody in office that understands their heart, right? So me as the president of Brooklyn, right? I want to be able, I want to be able to establish a decree and a declaration to our people, right? And here, here we go, right? Doggy Diamonds, right? I want y'all to hear this. I want, you, I want you to hear this first, right? Let me tell you what I want to do, right? Let me tell you what I want to do. And, and I'm going to start really putting this out there. Um, one of the main things that I want to do, I want to build the first Brooklyn Black-owned bank in mm. Brooklyn. Mm. So Carver is not Black-owned, Brooklyn? Carver is Black-owned, but I want a Brooklyn black owned bank. Okay, nothing, yeah, nothing that's all the boroughs, just Brooklyn, yeah. Brooklyn, okay. right? I want Brooklyn, a Brooklyn black owned bank, right? So therefore, right, we will be able to govern who gets lines of credit. We will be able to govern who gets approved for loans. I need this bank to be unique, to help people get to where they gotta go right? Even if they don't have credit history, right? I want, I want to be able to switch the guidelines, right? Another thing that I want to do, right, is I want to bring Black Wall Street to Brooklyn, right? I want to create an atmosphere where our children are not afraid to learn about stocks and bonds. So let me I ask you something. Where would this be, though? Because I'm, I'm thinking about the town. Like, where the hell would this go? Like what, yeah. what part of Brooklyn? Downtown Brooklyn. Okay. Cause you know, downtown Brooklyn on um, what's his name? Ratner got all of that down there. Like how you get some of that back? So, so th there is a lot of land, right? There is a lot of land that we, that you guys don't know, right? Look at the Brooklyn Navy Yard, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. 
there's a lot of land there, right? There's a lot of land that the city owns, right? And you have to understand the agency of the of the bold president. I can walk into any door. So myself and the mayor, we're going to sit down and say, listen, y'all own this land right here. Well, we need to use this for the city's purposes, right? I want to open up a facility right here where therefore we extend Wall Street. We extend Wall Street to Brooklyn, right? We, we're bigger than Manhattan. So why not have a Wall Street in Brooklyn? Because right? they really was trying to make downtown a Manhattan at one point. And it, it, it kind of is. With Metro, remember when Metro Tech came, that was supposed to be the new Manhattan for Brooklyn. And, it, and to a certain extent, it is because that's why everybody wanted to move in my hood, Clinton Hills, because they could get downtown right on that A train. Two stops. They Hoyt and Skimmer on the J Street. You know, so right. go ahead. Right, 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 right. So, so, so. So at the end of the day, right, at the end of the day, what I want to do is I want to create the new Brooklyn, right? I want to create the new Brooklyn. I want to create the Brooklyn that 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 we lead now, right? We lead the masses, right? I want to be able to have a conversation with the Doggy Diamonds, with the Jay-Zs, with the 50 Cents, with the Cardi Bs, with with the um the Fabio Farins, with the Mainos, with you know, uh, you know, all of these people that 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 I, I'm connected to in some capacity. All of these people that I'm connected to in some capacity. And how do we come together with the foundation of 2.6 million people behind me as the president, right? Nobody can move like we're gonna be able to move. Because of our influence, all we need is the vehicle, just like that motion I used. All we need is the vehicle, so therefore we can establish, we can establish greatness, right? That's it, that's all we need, is the vehicle. If we get the vehicle that will establish greatness, right? If we get the vehicle that will establish greatness, we ain't gotta worry about nothing. We will be able, like I told Akon, I said, bro, I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing in Africa. I said, what I want to do, I want to team up with you because I want Brooklyn to be, to build a hospital in Africa called Brooklyn. Hmm. That's what I want to do. Um, another endorsement that I have, I have um, Spice Official. She's going to be the ambassador of the West Indian community, the Jamaican community. We're actually kicking off the, uh, the We Are Brooklyn tour this Saturday in Flatbush. You're the first to hear it, doggy. Dope. So, you know, yeah, we, we're doing a We Are Brooklyn tour, a campaign to elect Bishop Lamar Miller Whitehead as the, the youngest borough president ever and the first bishop ever to be the president of Brooklyn. So we're kicking that off. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you. It's, it is some things plaguing Brooklyn right now. Um, the street organizations in Brooklyn have, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm former, you know, I was out there when, when the Decepticons was out there and I'm, I'm a Raider and the Autobots and, you know, I was out there, the low lives, well, I was out there, you know what I'm saying? I was out there. It's a little different now. It's a little different now because, um, it's more exposure via social media. These little dudes found a way to get to the bag. So it's different things that's really, really propelling the violence and the visibility of the gangs because they have more of outlets. What is some of the things you can do to get a ceasefire, for one, to stop some of the violence and get some of these guys out of the prisons with the violence and get the police off their ass and get them to realize that Yo, y'all all gonna go to jail or die. Yo, you know, you know, you know, doggy man, like brother, you right up, right up my alley, man. All I've been doing is sitting down with the heads of the gangs. Okay. The wolves, the the the. Chose, the I'm waiting, yeah. The, I'm, I'm waiting to sit down with the chose. Okay. Um, the the bloods, the crips. Um, I've been sitting down with them, right? I haven't been so. Can I be honest with you? I haven't been sitting down with these politicians, mm. right? Because I really don't like how y'all moving, to be honest with you, right? Mm. And if you endorse, if you endorse me, and you do something that I don't like towards the community, I'm gonna crush you. Mm. Like I'm gonna roll over you, right? So I don't want you to feel that just because you endorse me that we friends. Because if you do something towards my community, because a lot of y'all are foul. See, there's so many things, doggy, that y'all don't see that I see. Do you know how many? 
African-American elected officials or just elected officials, period, how they are picking and choosing people to get behind just because of the money they raise, not even because of their plan. Mm. They they get behind people because of how much money they raise. So me, I raised a, a, a little over fifty thousand dollars because I just started raising money. Why? Because I wasn't raising money in the pandemic like all the rest of them. They they, they got two, three hundred, four hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars. I got fifty thousand. Right. But. I got such an influence on social media that stuff that they're going to spend, I ain't got to spend on, right? Mm. So it's going to balance out. But at the end of the day, right, they are jumping on people bandwagon as to how much money they raise and as to how many unions are endorsing them, right? So, so just because Verizon is not endorsing me, just because National Grid is not endorsing me, just because the uh, the the, the uh, Family Workers um, uh, Union is not endorsing me, or Local 37 is not endorsing me, just because I don't have those endorsements, then guess what? They don't care nothing about my plan. And that's what they're doing to us, right? And I was just reading an article, they were saying, well, this is Bishop Whitehead, and they didn't say anything about my endorsements. But then another candidate, they said, oh, these are some important endorsement, assembly men this and assembly woman this and council person this. So are you telling me that the influences that have more influence than these elected officials, y'all didn't put those down, right? What about the Akons, right? What about the Dame Dash, right? What about the Manos? What about the Fabio Farns? What about the Spice Official? What about people that got millions of followers and millions of influences? Are you telling me that they're not important? I need everybody to really wake up because at the end of the day, y'all can't complain no more. We as a culture cannot complain no more because they let me in, right? Mm. They let me in. They let one of us in, right? They let us They let us in. So now you can't complain. This can be the building block right now. And then another young man, he was running, right? And this is just crazy. I don't want to say no names, but he was running for the elected official, um, uh, for, for the office of the borough president. And um, he didn't meet the prerequisite. He didn't have his... Um, he didn't have his petitions together. Like I got thousands of petitions to make sure I got in. He didn't, he didn't meet the prerequisite of getting in. And he was split in the hood, right? So I told him, I said, yo, bro, get with me. Let's do this thing together. He still refused not to get with me, right? And I'm saying to myself, like, what is wrong with us? Do we really want to continue to get killed? Do we still do, 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 do? Like what's wrong? Like what's really wrong with us? We got the power. We got the influence. Doggy, you can call every podcast and say, "Yo, look, I need y'all to do me one favor. Put Bishop Whitehead on because we need him in office." Facts. That, but that's up, that's up to you, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Other people, you know what they're gonna say, yo? You know, yo, um, I need forty, fifty thousand in order to endorse you. Mm. But yet, as soon as you get locked up, and soon as the police bust you upside your head, you write me a letter. <laughs> No, it, 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 it's, it happens, dog. It, it, it literally happens. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if I can tell you some of the artists, I'm not even going to put their business in the streets, how many artists I helped get out of jail, mm -hmm. and they never, ever gave me $1. Wow. Never, ever, ever, and I never asked them. You have no idea. Let me tell you something. Outside of the bold president right now, I believe I honored the second most people from his office because what i looked at as i seen common people i seen common people every day i seen artists never have citations proclamations i was the one who got who gave foxy brown the key to brooklyn it was me i was the one who signed off on fabulous to get the key to brooklyn and to get his name on the walk of um on um in park in um Prospect Park, they have the Walk of Fame of Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. I was the one. It well, was I, I can't wait to get all mines now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need. I want my yeah. block renamed after me, but then go ahead. Yeah. And that's another law that I got to change, mm -hmm. right? Because in Brooklyn, there's a law that you have to die in order to get your name up there. Wow. Yeah, I'm alive. I need Waverly Avenue named after me, and I'm still here. My, my <laughs> mother and father met in a particular building. My whole family is from one block. My whole family has lived on one block, like both sides, my mother's side and my father's side. So I, I want stake on that block. So, all right, bro. So the, the, we have to somehow get some of that violence down. Um, we have to somehow 
defund the police. What does that mean? All right. So, so, so let me say this because I, I don't think I've really finished your answer. I'm glad you okay. brought that back. Okay. So, as far as with the uh, with the gangs, right? They've came to me and said, Bishop, if we put the guns down, what happens when they come back and retaliate against me? What are we gonna do? Mm -hmm. You see, we keep telling people put the guns down, but we're not putting nothing in their hands, mm -hmm. right? So what I want to do, I'm going to have a budget that's going to do, that's going to fix people's credit for free. That's going to set up people's, uh, uh, our, our, um, the constituents, um, um, 501c3s, right? Right? How can you get government money if you don't have government paperwork, right? You can't get uh, federal government money. You can't get state government money if you ain't got no 501c3s, right? If your if your paperwork is funny, then you ain't gonna get nothing. So I want to give. I want to put millions of dollars aside just to strengthen the 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 paperwork of the constituents of Brooklyn, right? Make sure that our gang, the gang members, if they want if they want to have a, a record label, right? They can have a for profit and a non profit. Why? Because they can help young other young men that want to desire to be in music. Look, you got a podcast, right? You can set up a, a 5013 and you can start helping young men, training young men and young, young women on how to do videos and how to do podcasting. You want to know what? That is a non that's a that, that's a, a, a um a nonprofit idea where you can get government money. So you get one or two million dollars and you helping young men in Brownsville, you helping young men in East New York, you helping young men in Coney Island, right? Like, like you, it's, it's money for this, right? It's money for this. Why in the world does the Jewish community, the Caucasian community, the Asian community, you think they just got that bag? No, they ain't just got, they don't got that bag. No, they, they, they paperwork is in position and they file this, they filed the right paperwork to get the right money. The only people that are struggling is us. You want to know why? Systemic racism. We don't know how to do nothing because nobody's in office that's going to step up for, for us. And let me tell you something with these young men, right? I told them, I said, look, I want to do a ceasefire. They're like, yo, Bishop, we with it. But well, how are we going to eat? I, I'm going to make sure that these 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 uh uh um these uh store owners and all these people that are coming to Borough Hall asking me for money, you got to open up these doors for our young people. Do you know how many hospitals in Brooklyn? I believe it's 17 hospitals in Brooklyn and all of them are getting or asking or getting money from the office of the board president to do things in their office, right? I'm in, in their hospitals, right? So if I'm giving you, and I know one one um, CEO that came to me particularly because he knew how close me and the board president was because I helped uh, the board president a lot. And he was telling me, yeah, you know, we just got $25 million from the office of the board president because we're going to do this and we're going to do this for Brooklyn. We're going to do this. And the first thing I said to them was, how many people are you hiring? Because there's a project right next door. Mum's the word. Hmm. Right. So at the end of the day, every hospital and every organization that I'm giving money to, you got to hire people in the community. You got to hire black and brown people in the community. Guess what? You developers that are coming out, that are coming into Brooklyn to build up. You're not going to be bringing no co no company from Long Island. If you do, that company has to hire Brooklyn residents to do the work. You want to know why? Because what I'm going to do, I'm going to pump money into the OSHA, uh, uh, the um, getting OSHA approved, right? If Listen, you don't got to go to college. You, you might want to be a construction worker. No problem. I want to make sure that you have your OSHA card. I want to make sure that we have OSHA classes in Borough Hall. I want to make sure schools have OSHA classes so therefore young men, young women can do the flag and make Forty-five dollars an hour. Yeah, right? they don't know that. Wave, just they waving that, that flag. Yeah, yeah. Waving a flag, you making forty-five dollars an hour, right? So therefore, if you could wave a flag and do and get forty-five dollars uh, legally, and you bring it home three, four thousand dollars a week, right? Why in the world would you want to hustle? You bring in three, four thousand dollars a week after taxes. Your credit is seven fifty. Right. You can live where you want to live. You can drive where you want to drive. You think you think one of these young boys going to pick up a gun? It, it, it's, it's logically it don't make sense, because if you do want to do that, you deserve to go to jail. But at the end of the day, systemic racism has has crippled our community to not understand knowledge, not understand balance and not understand like, yo, this money is right here. And we need somebody in office that understand our pain. You know what I mean? Understand. So therefore, as far as 
um, with 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 stopping the violence, I'm coming with a plan. Got you. Putting down the guns, I'm coming with a plan. I'm not just telling you to put down the guns. I'm not telling you to drop your flags, right? For all I care, you can keep your flag up. Just stop the violence. Yes, yes. Do, your doggy, look, 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 look. What is the difference between unions and gang members? Nothing. Unions, unions protect their job, um, protect the employees' jobs, and it's a brotherhood and a sisterhood. Gang members, right? They protect the brotherhood and the sisterhood but they just do it in violence. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually going after street unions because- I call when, them street organizations. I never call them right, gangs. Yeah. Right. They're just so not my, organized. They're just not organized. They're they organized. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if I can show them how to take the violence out, right? And show them how to continuously use your power and your influence, but to do the right thing, we can turn around gang members into businessmen. We can t turn around gang members into families as far as husband and wife. I, I, I'm married, I've been married next uh, two weeks, two years, right? Mm. So therefore, Brooklyn never had a first family, doggy. You, 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 I'm not out here cheating on my wife, mm. right? So I have, you have a young man, 43 years old, right? Um, God has really blessed me. I do what I want to do, right? However, I don't got to look over my shoulder. I don't got to sit there and say, oh, man, I was in a strip club. I screwed this girl. Einstein said that doing the same thing over and over again, expecting for change, is insanity. insanity. Mm -hmm. So that means we black and brown, all of us influencers, have been insane in our mind for a long time. Why do I say that? Doggy, you want to know why? Because how are we expecting the police not to kill us? How do we expect the police to give us equality just like any other race if we keep not voting, if we keep doing the same thing, if only time we vote is the president election, right? Where the president, he does things on a bigger scale federally, but locally you have no power. So what about um why is there no uh uh vocational programs um um why why is there no community centers why is there nothing for the children to do I think that's because, why they get into shit too cuz it ain't nothing to do You want to know why? Mm -hmm. Because the powers that be don't care. Hmm. Think about it. Think about this, right? And I like to give analogies, right? Let's say doggy you got a 3-year-old daughter. Mhm. Mm right? And you walk out, you live in your house, you walk out, you walk 10 steps outside of your house, right? And you tell your daughter, close your eyes, baby, right? And you say, and you leave and go lock the door, right? Your daughter is going to bang on the door and cry because mm -hmm. she's locked out of her house. And the first person that pull up on her can take her. Mm. And that's what's happening in our community. We've locked them out of the community centers. We even closed the schools that's not even being operated. Hmm. We closed the doors of the schools where the doors of the schools can still be open and young men and young women can be in there uh, playing basketball or learning a craft or learning a vocational. But yet we closed them out. You want to know why? So now violence is picking them up. How in the world, logically, are we saying we're doing the right thing? Right? How? How in the world? How in the world can we say we're doing the right thing? Right? Because we're not doing the right thing. We got, we got, we got this candidate named Robert Carnegie, right? Complete bust. Now I'm gonna start calling names out. Mm -hmm. He's a complete bust, right? He was over NYCHA, over financing. Complete bust. Complete bust. Yeah, NYCHA is horrible. Then you got this guy named uh, Kyrie Edwards, right? He was the vice president of community affairs for Brooklyn Hospital. Do you know how many people died in Brooklyn Hospital? I don't go they to Brooklyn Hospital. Right. And that's right. My, that's that, that's my local hospital. I go I will go all the way to um 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 Methodist before I go to Brooklyn Hospital. Right. And he's running and he's running for borough president. Hmm. And he's running for borough president, the commu vice president of community affairs. And he's running for borough president. Then you have a guy by the name of uh, uh, Antonio Reynoso. He's, he's, he's a Dominican in Bushwick, right? He ain't do nothing in Bushwick. Hmm. 
And on one of our debates, I said that, you know, we need to encourage our um, our community as far as credit. He came back and said credit was made to hurt us, not to help us. What are you talking about? He said we shouldn't need credit. What are you talking about? Spoken like a complete idiot. Right. So then we have uh, Matthews Eugene, right? He's been the city council person for 14 years and didn't do nothing for Canarsie. Hmm. Oh, I mean, Blackwish. Nothing. Then we have um, uh, uh, this lady named Joanne Simon, right? Mm -hmm. She is the assemblywoman in the highest rated voting block in Park Slope. But when they painted this, I believe they, they, they this, this, the, uh, this uh, Caucasian school painted, I think, painted a child, a black child looking like a monkey, right? Mm -hmm. She had nothing to say. Hmm. It was something that they did, but don't worry. I'm, I'm going to let everybody know. I'm about to put some stuff out. Don't worry about that. I got this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I'm coming for the head. Joanne Simon is a racist, hmm. right? Period, point blank. And she's saying, oh, I want to be the first uh, woman to become the president of Brooklyn. But what you do, you don't represent, right? You don't represent, you don't, you don't represent for the whole borough of Brooklyn. You represent for yourself. Then you have a lady named Kim Council, right? She's a minister, associate minister, right? She just ran for, um, for in a special election. That means somebody left the seat in Bushwick. Mm -hmm. She lost a few months ago. She lost. And now all of a sudden you running for the president of Brooklyn. You can't even win a little district. And mm -hmm. now you want to find a... So, 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 so what I'm saying to y'all is they are bamboozling us. Right. And we have to wake up. Right. And what am I going to do with with all the with vocational? I want to open it back up. Mm. I, want, I have the understanding that everybody's not going to go to college. Yeah. But yet, if they have a trade, mm -hmm. they can make money. Plumbers are making one hundred and fifty dollars an hour. All they need to do is have the knowing, have the certification. So what I'm going to do is. Uh, companies establish plumbing companies, you got to donate some time back and you got to give free classes with free certifications, right? Because we have people in NYCHA building that can't afford it. And guess what? If you need help from me, I need help from you. If you need help from me, I need help from you. So, so let me ask you something. Defunding the police. What is that? Can you... Okay. Could you I'm glad you talked about that. So when they talk about defunding the police, they're not talking about, um, as per my understanding, they're not talking about cutting their um, their salaries. They're not talking about that. What they're talking about is uh, NYPD have a funding that they get, right, um, to do certain things, to, do, to, to fund their vehicles, to fund their nonprofits, to fund what they want to fund, right? So they're saying, look, we need to cut their funding, right, and take some of that funding and put it elsewhere, right? Now, I'm against that. Let me tell you why. The reason why I'm against defunding the police is because we need the police, right? And, I'm, and I have the right to say this after the police killed my father, so I got to be trying to make some type of sense, right? Please if make we, it make sense. Make it make right, sense. Right. If we defund the police, right, then we will lose the presence of the police, in different aspects of our um, of our community. Now, we don't know what it's going to look like if we defund the police. Look at what it already looks like, and the police is not defunded. So, if we defund the police, it's going to get worse. But what do I want to do? What I want to do with the police is they have to have an ultimatum. I'm not going to push to defund you, but what I need you to do is create initiatives for the community. So instead of taking the money from them, I want them to use the money as an NYPD initiative, but give it back to the community. So we're not actually taking it from them. We're not going to take their glory. We want them to be a part of the community. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now they can use the money that we are trying to take from them, use it in the community 
from them so therefore they can be a part of the community for how? example yeah yeah how? Okay, for for example right education right we could say let's take 20 million dollars from the NYPD so therefore we can put it in education mm -hmm. right why not keep the 20 million dollars there and say you know what we want NYPD to create a community center to hire te or hire teachers to educate our community on criminal justice educate our community on 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 policing our neighborhood i'm and i'm just bringing things off the top of my top of my head educating our community on free classes on how to be a police officer free classes on what a sergeant do um free classes on mental health giving back to our community hiring mental health people in our community so that 20 million dollars that the city would quote unquote use for education they can use for educating our community through the NYPD instead of pulling teeth and saying we're going to defund the police. But you know they don't need new cars and all that stuff, right? They don't need they I mean how many cars do they need and and, and... Right. So, so so at the end of the day, right? Look, they're going to use the cars. How, I mean they're going to use the, their money how they want to use their money, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if they don't agree that they're going to put a portion of that money back in the community, then I'm all for defunding them. That's what I'm saying, because police, right. police in our community are just policing the community and just looking for people to arrest. That's it. So that right. has to change. So it's if, if they don't want to change and stop looking and railroading people and doing all the madness, they got to be defunded. They got to be defunded. They, they have to. Be. That money has to be allotted into things that's going to give. And I'm telling you, you know, like I said, me and you like the same age. It has a lot to do with having nothing to do. They took the, they, there's a lot of basketball courts. There is no hoops. There is no courts. There is nothing to do. I, I was just saying to my man today, I said, yo, remember we used to call each other and say, yo, let's go run this full. Right. right. Let's go run this full court. Let's go, yo, let's go play some football. Let's do, none of that is going on. You go outside, the little girls are not playing double dust. Nothing is going on because everybody is afraid to be outside because you're scared of the ops or you're scared of the cops. But look Either at this, or. But, but, but look at this, right? Look at this, doggy. And this is why, right, I say I want to give them a chance to, 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 to fund things. Think about this. If I say, well, we're taking money. We're going to take money from, we're going to take money from the police officers, right? All that's going to do is bring more aggravation, right? We're gonna take this money so we can use it on our own, right? But then how can I sit here and echo that I want NYPD and the community to have a marriage? In order to have a marriage, logically, we have to say, what are y'all doing for us? So now if the NYPD say, yo, you know what? 20 million a year, we're going to give back into the community. We, we wanna build a facility where we give free classes, resume writing, right? We get free classes on 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 um on 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 um mental health. We want to give free classes on financial literacy. And now this is coming from the NYPD. So now logically our community is gonna say, oh what? Okay. And then we can have officers teach these classes. So therefore, now the NYPD and the community are now doing things together. And now we are not going to be so frightened and they're not going to be so frightened from us because now if we have a community center with the NYPD teaching mental health, teaching regular classes now. And then the commanding officers come in, the chiefs of police coming in there and they're like, yo, what's up? Knowing us each other on the first name. Like, what's up? What's up? Oh, yeah. You know, this command over here. Yeah. You know that beat walker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's my dude. OK, cool, cool. Yo, I had a little bump into I'm going to holler at him. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, oh now we're talking. Now we're talking. But if we take their money from them, right, and don't give them an opportunity to build with us, now it's going to be a harder lift. But they don't My get five years, man. They don't get three years, man. They get like, nah, like, they like, get they get like 60 year. days, man. <laughs> they get, they, listen, listen, they get, they get one year. Let me tell you one year. Six months for the money to drop mm -hmm. and six months to start seeing where we're going with it. Another question I wanted to ask you, being that, you know, this is one of your fields. Why? What happened to the church? The church historically used to be a very big staple 
in the communities when it when we had communities. Now it's like a church on every block, every corner, but I don't see the people in the church anymore and I don't see the church going outside interacting with the people anymore. What happened to the black church? That's a good question, brother. Um Let me tell you what happened to the church. Egos, pride, um, lack of community relations, and um, pastors just starting to hate on each other. A word y'all got, is, is pastor beef? Is it pastor beef? I mean, I wouldn't know. I, <laughs> I go in the church, it's I might... I might burn. I might get set on fire. Like, no, you won't. <laughs> no, I'm no, just no, saying. No, no I'm just saying. Sit. Walking there, like, uh, oh, what's that movie? Um, 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 Vampire in Brooklyn. I walk in there. Like, Damn, it's hot in there. But um, yeah. Go ahead. Some, some some of these pastors are uh -huh. like that. Let me say this, right, brother? And I'm gonna keep it all the way real. Can I keep it all the way real with y'all? You have to. No filter, man. No filter. Okay. When you have pastors that want to sleep with the church, damn, right? How? Can you teach the community on how not to sleep and how not how, on, on how not to do the right thing? When you got pastors that are um, in the Word of God, it teaches against homosexuality. Mm. But you have pastors in the pulpit that are chasing boys down, Damn. right behind closed doors, right. And like I said, me as the bold president, you are who you are. You be who you be. Whatever. The government owes you, whether if you homosexual, whether you're adulterer, whether if you're a fornicator, that's on you. But when I'm the bishop, I teach Bible, mm. right? So you asked about the church. The church, what about the reason why we're not in the community is because the choirs of the church are too busy having orgies, right? See, 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 you have to understand, right? The church always pointing the finger at the streets, mm -hmm. right? But then they hide their dirt in the closet, mm. right? And at the end of the day, this is what about my ministry. My ministry is real, right? All the way real, right? I ain't got time to play church because God saved my life. I had 11 and a third to 34 years and God turned it around. My daddy died. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and I didn't die. Shoot, a shot, shots fired, you name it, you name you. I done been through it. And at the end of the day, God saved my life. Who the hell am I to go into the pulpit and poison the word of God? Right. I stand for God. Right. And this is why my ministry is so authentic, because I'm not trying to sleep with my church. I don't got musicians. You want to know why? Because the musicians play good to sleep with the church. They play good. So they, <laughs> they become I, rock stars and they're like, yo, the drummer, yeah, yeah. the drummer knocking everything down over here. Yeah. yeah I ain't time for that. So at yeah. the end of the day, at the end of the day. Right. Why uh, is the community not why is the church not in the community? Let me let me tell you. Can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. Something that happened just past Sunday. You said pastors beef. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's rough. So, so you know, they call me. A lot of people call me the hip hop bishop because I, you know, a lot of celebrities. I mentor them. I'm pastor a lot of celebrities. Five year farming. Um, um, a lot of them. A lot of them. A lot of them. And um, could you get some of them off the drugs? I'm working on that. Okay, yeah. That's I'm another working. thing. These young dudes yeah. got to get off them drugs, yeah, man. I'm working on that. I'm working on it. And, and at the end of the day, you know, I got to let them be them until they understand what they're doing is not right, right? Yeah, but I, by I, the time that... But see, the only thing with that, bro, by the time they realize they're either dead or in jail or killed somebody. So they're, they're... I don't... A lot of them, and I'm not pointing anybody out, but the way the system is set up from the hip-hop, from the higher ups in hip hop that's rewarding them for being dumb and being idiots. All they see is that bag. So they're doing any and everything to get the bag. And sometimes the image is what's getting them the bag. So they, they are sipping the lean. They smoking all types of crazy weed. They're popping pills and a destructive behavior is a result of the drug use. So you can be you, but you can't be no dope fiend because in no community, we never respected the fiends. Well, 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 you 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 one thousand percent right, but 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 they made they made it cool now. You know, we, they they got to make cool. it uncool. They you the you the you 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 working with the word of God. That that yeah. should be the yeah. higher word than everything. Yeah, they 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 made it cool. But one thing that I learned, doggy, right, that uh, you know, I've been pastoring now this September eight years. I've been mm -hmm. a bishop over five years now, and I work in wisdom. And at the end of the day, right. I'd rather 
be I'd rather continue to get close to them where they trust the God in me than to break them. Right. So therefore, that's why I say I move accordingly, you know, and they and they gradually change because when they see me, they see change. Right. When they, mm -hmm. you know, and they know that they know what not to do and they know, you know, um, what's the wrong thing to do. So you have to understand in order to change, you got to see change first. You got to mm -hmm. believe. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not forceful with them. And God is really um, actually having me. I'm, I'm doing a good job with it. But let me tell you about this beef with pastors. Right. Ahead, let me tell you. And let me tell you what's going on with the church, right? So I got a phone call that, you know, I was supposed to be doing um, DMX funeral, right? Mm. Um, I was I was supposed to be be uh, on the program doing the um, doing the, uh, the obituary and they wanted to see where else they wanted to have me um, as to the um, uh, uh, on the program. Mm -hmm. So... Um, they 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 contact my um my my team and say well we want Bishop to read the the, uh, the obituary it's really really long it's like a main part B T is gonna be screaming it YouTube's gonna be screaming it this that, and third we really want Bishop to do it I said cool no problem so um they I asked him I said so what is the setup what is going on with X because X that was one of my guys um, D from Rough Riders that was my he seen me come up you know I've been in I've been in the woove with Rough Riders and the industry for a long time so it, this was personable to me you know what I'm saying it was personable to me so I said whatever I need to do I'm gonna do I'm not charging nobody nothing I'm let's do what we got to do like I'm I'm here for the streets so doggy um I got that call on a Wednesday. I said, so where's it gonna be? So they was looking at Yankee Stadium. And I'm telling y'all behind the scenes because you know, no filter. So it was supposed to be, they was looking at Yankee Stadium. So then they said, no, well, they they agreed to do it at the Barclay Center for the memorial, and they was gonna do it at the 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 uh, family and friends, the close friends, it was gonna be at Christian Culture Center. That's CCC right there on Flatlands in Pennsylvania. That is the biggest church in Brooklyn, over 20,000 members, right? Mm. Pastor, Pastor A.R. Bernard. So when they text me and told me that, I said, okay, okay, all right. I said, okay, cool. I said, I got it. And my my um, my team said, why you say that? I said, you know, they're they're very they're very different over there. They're you know they're they're and I'm talking about the church. They're very uppy over there, but I know them, um, so we should be all right. Like you know, they know me. They know who I am. The very next day, my team got a text and said, um, the church pastor A R Bernard who's the pastor of the church of over 20,000 members removed Bishop from the program. Hmm. Now, DMX family, they paid for the church. How are you removing anybody off the program? Hmm. Right? So they're going through what they're going through, but what pastor A.R. Bernard and his church did, they said, Bishop uh, Whitehead, was arrested before and he was in the media. So what they're talking about is um, an article that came out in 2016 from an old uh, uh, ex um, co-worker and one of uh, and, and one of and, and my, my ex-wife they came at my um, after my um, uh, my character mm -hmm. and it went to the New York Post. And what they did was all they did was tell the post that I was convicted before and they lied and said that I was taking I was I was using phony pro pro phony youth programs to take government funding, mm -hmm. right? Which is all a lie because I've never took one dollar from the government. Mm -hmm. I've never got funded for nothing from the government. So it was a complete lie. So that's what the article they was talking about. So A.R. Bernard pretty much stated it was bad for media. So I said, so my team said, you'll call him, find out what's going on if he have a problem with you. So I reached out to the church. I said, let A.R. Bernard Bishop Lamar Miller Whitehead want to talk to him because I outrank him. I'm a bishop. I'm over. I'm outrank him. Right? He's He has a bigger, he has a big congregation. He's a pastor, but I'm a bishop. Right. So um, I text his son. I mean, his son know each other. I said, yo, what's going on? He said, yo, we always um, knew each other. We never hated on you. I said, this is why I'm confused about it. Make a long story short. They denied it. They denied it. So I said, look, I told my team, don't worry about it. I'm cool. 
I'm always on TV. I'm cool. Don't worry about it. They don't want me on a program. Don't worry about it. Let, let, let DMX family go through what they're going through, and I'll just go there to support. I get there on Sunday. I come inside the gate, right? The head security seen me pull in, stopped me, and said, you, gotta, you, got, you cannot park on these grounds. I said, why? Why can't I park on these grounds? He said, we're waiting for more buses. I said, well, we got a lot of parking spots. I said, brother, you know I park over here. Like, it's not a problem. He said, let me call, let me call the pastor. Let me call the pastor. He called the pastor's son, who is the pastor also. Well, one of the pastors. He said, um, I was here and I saw Bishop Whitehead trying, trying to park. He was trying to park like as if I was sneaking. I caught him trying to park. I'm like, mm -hmm. so I looked at my, my, my security, Dre. I said, yo, bro, do you hear this? He said, yeah. And he says, well, I'm about to kick him out, but I just want to let you know that I'm about to kick him out right now. So now it all sounds premeditated. And I'm saying to, I said, told my security, I said, yo, you hear this? He said, yo, this is crazy. So he come back, I said, yo, bro, I heard you. What's the problem? No, you gotta be, you gotta get off this, you gotta get off the ground. Now this is a pastor, that this is coming from A.R. Bernard to a bishop. I supposed to be a minister of the gospel and now you removing me off your church property. So I said, no problem. I removed my car off and I came back to walk in because I'm on a list. They said, you are not permitted to come in. I said, I'm on a list. Like, what are you talking about? So my team said, go around the front. They got your they got your name on the list. I walk around the front. They said, Bishop, we thought you was in already. I said, don't worry about it. The same security runs to the other gate and stops me. So one of the Nation of Islam brothers said, yo, this is Bishop Whitehead. Like, what you doing? He told him that A.R. Bernard does not want me in his church. Mm. So when you talk about the debacle inside of the church, you have to look at the leaders of the church. Hmm. Pride. He got over 20,000 members. He is probably 20 years older than me. And he's hating on me. For what reason? Because I'm into hip hop. I got the hip hop community. Um, lives are being saved. 50 Cent came to the church on one of my events. And 50 Cent himself raised his hand and gave his life to God under mm. my ministry. Casanova raised his hand and gave his life to God. Mano raised his hand and gave his life to God. 6 9 before he started doing all of this, before he got in all this trouble, before he went to prison, sat in my pulpit, raised his hand and gave his life to God. Fabio Farin raised his hand, gave his life to God. DJ Youngchild raised his hand, gave his life to God. Angela Yee raised her hand, gave her life to God. DJ Self raised his hand, gave his life to God. And I, Zab Judah raised his hand, gave his life to God. And I can go on and on and on as to the artists that have raised their hand and gave their life to God through my ministry. So and they that, don't like it. So that's so now you know why, but um, yeah, uh, Casanova needs some God right now. If a few of them need, they they need they need a lot right now. Um, but but all right. So to to what's your social media? Let's give them that. Uh, my Instagram is Bishop Lamor L A M O R M Whitehead. Okay, that's Instagram. Facebook. All you got to do is take the bishop off, and it's Lamor M Whitehead. Okay, so before you go, why should the people vote for you? Because he's one of us. I'm you. That's it. I'm you. I know your pain. I know your struggle. Right. I went to prison illegally. I came home. God allowed me to go into the pulpit to preach the word of God. And now I'm going to win the president of over 2.6 million people from the prison to the pulpit to the office of the bold president. It's the narrative. God saved my life so I can save your life. My moral compass is set up different, y'all, right? I'm not a politician. I'm an elected official. I'm a businessman. I understand politics. I'm not mixy out here. It's not a circus. I'm not on a revolution. No, I want to change the world. I'm a world changer. I'm not a game changer. I'm a world changer. Why do y'all, why should you vote for me? Why not? Why shouldn't vote, Brooklyn vote for me? Why not? Because everybody that I'm talking to right now, I can guarantee nine out of 10 of you 
never voted for the for the president of Brooklyn. Never even went down to vote for the borough president. From the age of 14 to 45, 95% never knew that there was a borough president. This is why y'all should vote for me. Y'all should vote for me because even these rap labels, I've been arguing with them. You want to know why? Because some of these artists are prohibited from doing peace marches and peace walks because the record label said it's bad for record sales. Whoa. Yeah, say yeah, say yeah. that again. Say that again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Record labels. I've been going back and forth with them because they've been trying to go against me from doing peace walks. And I'm not going to say the artist right now. Peace walks and peace rallies and lay down the guns and all this, that, and the third, right? They have been threatening artists to drop them if they do peace walks because it's bad for record sales. So I need y'all to understand what's going on. So now if I give artists an opportunity to make money elsewhere by them coming on my platform, bringing them to different countries, using their influence because we're strengthening Brooklyn together, then guess what? They will have more bargaining power. But if that's their only way to income, you know what they say? Yo, Bishop, man, I don't want to lose my money, Bishop. You know what I'm saying? Then they start ducking my calls because the record labels is putting pressure on them because they got to speak violence. They got to speak gangs. They got to shoot. They got to talk, shoot them up. They got, or they're going to get dropped, right? This is why I want to become the ball president and I am going to become the ball president. The reason why I want to become the ball president is because when I'm on forums, when they talk about uh, green energy, I was on a forum, they talk about green energy. What are you going to do for the parks? I'm going to do everything for the parks, but what are we going to do about the lead poisoning that's in the projects? So why, why does it always have to be green in the parks? Why can't it be green in the projects, right? Why can't, they, why can't we uh, live a life not having to drink from lead uh, faucets or uh, uh, asbestos in the in the hallways. Like, what about NYCHA buildings, right? Well, what damn about roaches. <laughs> right, ro yeah, ro roaches. Rats. Roaches and My rats, God. man. What about that? So this is, this is what I bring to the table for Brooklyn. He's one of us. We are Brooklyn, right? You got somebody that you can touch, you can call. I understand your story. And guess what? You're not going to pull, you're not going to manipulate me, right? If your story is right, we're going to work. I'm not somebody, oh, he's just a hood nigga. No, not at all. I'm not. I'm very authentic. I'm very educated. I'm very militant. And I'm going to do what we need to do for Brooklyn. We need to change the dynamics of Brooklyn. We are the source of the world. And I want to be able to pull all of us together, one body, one voice. Because the only voice we have is Al Sharpton. Oh, on that note. <laughs> and now <laughs> activism has become the new hustle. Wow. What are we going to do now, y'all? They let, they let one of us in. What are we going to do? Go to my Instagram. Check me out. Y'all yes. see I've been doing this. Check All me right. out. I make sure your Instagram is the first pinned yeah. comment on this video. Yeah. Um, I thank you for, for joining me. Shout out to Big Dre. That's, you know, that's my bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, Brooklyn's government army on, on, um, Instagram, but shout out to Dre. And, um, yeah, we going to build, I'm going to make sure he, uh, cause we always talking through Dre. Why we always talking through Dre, man? I need your direct uh, number. So yeah, 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 I yeah, hate you, yeah. but we, 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 but everything it is. So, um, yeah, I'll build with you later on. Thank you for coming on. And, well, dog, um, go ahead, thing, go ahead. Dog, I'm asking everybody to go to my website. My campaign website, it's easy. Whitehead4, F-O-R-B-K.com. Why am I saying this? I set my website up so simplistic. If you want to register to vote, all you got to do is click vote, voters information, and it takes you right to the city website, and you can sign up to vote online. Easy. Say that if website again. Whitehead4. That's F-O-R-B-K. So that's whitehead4bk.com. If you want to sign up to vote, register to vote, you go to the website, hit vote, information of what information to vote, boom, it sends you right to the website. Now, if you know that you're not going to go out on June 22nd to vote, you know, you got you know yourself. If you know you're not going out, go to my website. If you're registered to vote already, click absentee ballot. Sign up for absentee ballot. They will smell you the ballot. You fill it out. Send it back in. You ain't got to, you ain't, that's it. That's all you got to do, right? 
And I'm asking everybody to donate to the campaign. I can't spend my own money on the campaign. So with these next two weeks, we're looking for 1,000 people from New York City, that's all five boroughs, to give $100. All you gotta do is click on donate. And doggy, this last thing that I wanna say to y'all, mm -hmm. they switched up the voting. It's something called ranked choice voting. And what it is very tricky, very tricky. Real quick, in 30 seconds, let me say this. If myself and Doggy was running for the president of Brooklyn and Doggy Diamonds came, if five people came, if five people was running and Doggy Diamonds was fifth, and y'all know that Bishop Whitehead and Doggy Diamonds are cool. You said, but I like Doggy a little better, right? You picked him number one, and then you picked num me number two, right? That's ranked choice voting. And since Doggy came in fifth and he got 18%, the number two that you pick gets all his votes. So if I had 25%, I'll get his 18% now. And now I have 30, what, 33%. That's how they're doing it. So I'm asking everybody, choose Whitehead only. That's it. Make it easy on yourself. Don't worry about this ranked choice nonsense. Choose Whitehead only. They are trying to mix the game up. And Doggy, I'm holding you that you get me on these other podcasts. I'm about to say, well, what the he, hell I do? I'm about to say, yo, I'm holding you accountable. I'm like, what I do? I, I don't <laughs> drink or smoke. But nah, I, I, we know we could work on that. Yeah, we could work yeah, on that. Yeah. All right, but yeah. we finally got it done. Um, Like I said, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, we're going we gonna to promote this. Uh, I'm going to make sure you got a clip mm -hmm. to put on your Instagram and everything like that. And um, it is what it is, bro. So, yo, thank you for... um. Uh, for coming through, and I'll build with you later on. Thank you so much. We got fit, less than 50 days, y'all, to primaries. Okay. Less than 50 days. June 22nd. And, Doggy, I want you to come out with us uh, this Saturday, man. We're going to be in Flatbush. I'll give you all the information. We're going to post it. It's okay. going to, we are Brooklyn tour to elect Bishop Lamar Miller Whitehead as the president of Brooklyn. Thank you so much, brother. Anything you need, I'm here. Okay. All right. Peace, bro. Thank you for coming through. Thank you. All, all right, y'all. Right. Yes, so, uh, you know, I'm going to start dibbling and dabbling a little bit more on the political side and start getting some of these people, these elected officials and these wanted to be elected officials to come on here, grill them, um, ask them some questions about what's going on in the community, what they plan on doing for the community. And, you know, the issue that we have a lot of times is that we just don't trust politicians. We don't trust politics. But, um, you know, we have to just ask critical questions. We have to ask critical questions. And if you don't like the answer, if you don't trust them or whatever, you don't got to vote for them. But we can't be in a situation where we want change and we tie in our own hands and saying, we want this to happen. We want that to happen. How is this supposed to happen? Who's supposed to grant it to you? You know, so it is what it is. Um, I'm Doggy Diamonds. This has been uh, Doggy Diamonds TV tonight. Thank y'all for joining me kind of impromptu so i didn't really get a chance to promote like that but i'm here and um, i'm about to get out of here though i got things to do like get some rest so it is what it is i'm out of here until next time hit the like hit the share leave a comment um you know people it was some people in the chat room just saying negative stuff so I, I i have blocked a few people i be trying not to block people but um you know I can't have you in here being disrespectful to my platform. You know, you don't have to agree with any guests. That's on you. But when you being, when I feel like you disrespecting my platform and not adding on, and then because you don't like what's being said, you hit the thumbs down on the video, that hurt me to hit the thumbs down. Don't hit you. If you hitting the thumbs down because you don't, just don't hit the like, but don't hit thumbs down because you don't like the guests and what they saying, whoever the guest is. But a lot of times y'all go hit thumbs down and that hurts me. You're not hurting the guests, you're hurting me and you're hurting my platform. I do all this shit for free, pro bono, and I don't get a bunch of money and all that to do this. And I'm always here, you know, all the time, you know, doing this for the people and bringing on different people. I could be on here doing a bunch of nigga shit all day, every day, and I don't even be doing that. But again, Y'all will go hit thumbs down, and I don't even understand that. It doesn't make any sense to me. If you don't like it, just don't do nothing. But why would you go hit thumbs down? And even in this information that he gave today, you're able to extract something. I'm always going to make sure that it's something that you can use in your life. 
So even though you might not, if you don't agree with his politics, some of the things he said earlier about how he got out of his case and out of his situation, that was big. And you have to know who these candidates are, especially if you're from Brooklyn. You know, I bring them all on. You know, so that's a, this is what I'm not getting from y'all, but I know y'all just want to see the shade room shit. I can't, I'm not bringing y'all that. I can't, I don't want to bring, that's not a part of my life. So I'm not going to bring you nothing that I don't partake in. You know, so again, we need to grill politicians. We need to grill these police. We need to grill these people because we so out of touch of what's really going on and what's really going on. They have meetings about us. They have town hall meetings. They do all these things about our future and we're never in those meetings. So if we could bring them to us and get them on record saying certain things. That is very, very important. I can't bring y'all rappers all the time. It's not about that because that's just talking about this industry. Did you hear what he said about the record labels want to drop artists because they want to do peace walks and it's not good for their image? You didn't hear that? Anyway, salute to everybody who supports. Salute to everybody who follows me on social media. Salute to everybody who's just been supporting whoever sends a cash app, PayPal, whatever. You bought merch. Salute to you. Salute to you if you subscribe and all that. And um, yes, we have to be more informed. We could be entertained all day, every day. That's not going nowhere. But information is hidden from us and not this regurgitated information that, oh, this is boule and all these words that y'all keep falling in love with. And I'm telling y'all, a lot of people who's telling you this shit don't even know what they're talking about. But, you know, you could keep you could keep going to that. You could keep following these people and listening to that while they making plans for us. And we don't even know what's going on. So, again, we going to bring them here and put them in front of me, in front of you. And we going to have to be able to ask them questions. And sometimes I'm going to have it to where y'all could call in and y'all ask them critical questions. Because that's what it's all about. Because that's what them folks do when they got candidates and they got people who are running and want they vote they ask them questions we just automatically just get mad oh he sound like he lying oh i don't mess with the church oh i don't do so what do you do you just laying down waiting to die right and watching pockets that's all that's all we good at watching pockets smoking weed fucking drinking listening to rap and worry about who versus better jay-z or not but everything going on in the world we have no clue what's going on we don't have no clue what's going on. And we keep following people who's regurgitating shit that been regurgitating the same thing that they heard, but what they heard, from what they heard, what they heard, but what's changing? Nothing. Now we got an opportunity. They want to come to us. They want to come to hip hop. They want to come on our platforms. They want to come. So you want to come here? All right. This is what I need for you to do. And this is what I need you to explain to me and explain to us. That's really what it's all about. That don't mean we getting down with them. That don't mean I'm joining anybody church. Let me explain something to you. I just told my cousin the other day, my biggest heroes and sheroes is right out of the nation of Islam. But I'm not a nation of Islam member. I'm not a member. But uh, Malcolm, uh, Dr. Khaled, like some of my biggest heroes. But I'm not a part of the nation of Islam. So just because... They're my heroes. I got to join them. No, you take the information that you need and that can help you. And that's it. But y'all keep throwing everything away. But y'all following people who don't care about you, who after a while tell you, yo, I just made this money. I got this bread counting money in your face because y'all like to deal with people so you could be mad at them after a while. But, you know, that, it is what it is. It's Saturday night. Actually, um, today is always an emotional day for me. It's my mother's birthday. I don't really partake. And um, I don't care what nobody else had. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what nobody else had on their platform. You know what I'm saying? So what I want to say, though, today is my mother's birthday. Today is always like a very, very emotional day for me. But I'm still here with y'all, you know. And this is community work to me because I have to bring on candidates from my borough. You know, so... uh. It is what it is. Thank y'all for joining me tonight. I, I'm out. Make sure you uh, click subscribe, youtube.com slash doggy diamonds TV. Till next time, peace.